All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today to talk about how we can legally co-market our business to give you some tips and tricks of things you can do that you're probably not doing and some things to be very wary of that are happening even in our community that are straight up violations of federal and state law and I don't want anybody to get in trouble. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Again, my name is Meredith Nagel. I'm here on behalf of Concierge Title and our law firm, The Legacy Legal Team. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see the beautiful people that make me always look good, which is my amazing team. And hopefully you can see those. Okay, can you see my beautiful people? Ah, love these yep. people. Okay, so let's talk about co-marking legally. All right, so what is the law? You guys, everything um, that we're gonna talk about today is governed, but firstly by RESPA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, um, which many of you have heard that term before. When RESPA first rolled out, everything we're talking about really only applied to federally insured mortgage lending. Now, as you can imagine, um, the CFPB and other regulators were not happy with that limitation. So now everything we're going to be talking about extends to cash deals, um, extends uh, to any kind of deal that you're going to do, and it extends to everybody in the real estate transaction. So while we're going to be talking about title companies, these are tips and tricks that you can use with your lenders, things you can do legally with your lenders to take advantage of. Um, anybody that's providing settlement services within the transaction. All right. So the bottom line is if you are not supposed to get anything of value for referrals of settlement services. This law is interpreted and enforced through the CFPB. You guys remember the CFPB that we all learned about when they came out with the new settlement statement those many years ago that was supposed to be so helpful and all it did was cause more problems. Remember those people? All right, these same people are the same people trying to tell us what these laws mean. So as you can imagine, uh, I don't have a whole lot of uh, helpful thoughts for these folks. In my opinion, they do not do business in this industry or talk to people in this industry apparently. They're just a bunch of think tank people that think about ideas and think they would be good. So they gave us this broad um, kind of law that says you can't get or receive anything for referring settlement services. If you do this, you can get fines, loss of licensure, criminal prosecution and imprisonment. And something you need to be very, very careful about is some large title agencies or corporate um, corporately owned title agents, like you may think that you're working with a local title agent and what you don't realize is they're actually owned, owned by the big overall underwriter. Those folks can afford to pay fines. Y'all can't and y'all definitely cannot afford to lose your license. So you need to be paying attention. If something is happening and it is causing you to benefit yourself and not your customer, that's the first sign that you've gone the wrong direction. The whole idea of the law is that who you recommend, who you in involve in your transaction is going to be the best person for that job based on your experience with that person or company. That was the idea. Of course, all of us involved in settlement services, lawyers, lenders, realtors, everybody else, how do we get business? We get business by getting referrals. How do we get referrals? We try to find a way to make it, quote, worth your while. So what we're going to talk about today is a way you can do this legally in the way that some of you are doing it illegally or that your brokers might be doing illegally. And I don't want you to get caught up in all of that. So I can hi, hi, Mr. Hubbard. I think that's who I see in the background. OK, so example of what's legal. All right. True co-marketing. Right. So the old the old standby of doing a flyer with a mortgage lender or buying an ad with a lender, all of that is totally legal. However, you have to be very careful that they are getting the same benefit as you are. So, for an example, a um, lender can produce with you a advertising piece and y'all can send it anywhere you want to go. But unless they can pay no more than 50% of that advertisement, 
unless they're taking up more of the advertisement. So what does that mean? That means if you do a flyer with me or you do a door knocker with me, I have to be prominently featured on that advertisement, my own company, because it has to be a true co-advertisement agreement. So think about it. If all I'm doing is paying for Joanna's um, door knockers, that would be clearly against the law, right? Because I'm, I'm giving her a service in the hopes that she will refer me business. However, if Joe and I are legally co-marketing, that is developing an ad campaign together, and we share the cost and share the exposure, that's totally legit. You can do that all day long with your lenders and with your title companies. Just be careful, guys, that you're not in a situation where they're paying for everything um, and uh, not participating because that would be a real big problem. So that, you know, I've, I've pointed out here that the amount paid by the referral partner must be equal to their own advertisement of services. All right, you can receive goods or services from your marketers, I mean, from your um, settlement service folks. So, you know, if a title company wants to come around and give everybody uh, a, um, a calendar that has their name on it, that's totally fine. They're giving it to everybody. They're not targeting you and it's advertising them. So, um, for example, if a, if, uh, I'll, I'll make Joe my victim again. If, uh, Joe and I wanted to do a, a marketing event together, we could do that and pay the marketing costs half and half but we have to both be involved in the event. So again, I can't purchase an event for Joe. Also, the event has to be open to everyone. What Joe and I are not allowed to do, unfortunately, is pay for a cruise for all of the people who go on my Zoom, um, my, my come on these Zoom lunch and learns, right? Because that would be trying to solicit your business. We could, if Joe and I wanted to throw a cruise where every realtor was involved and every lender was invited and we were willing to shoulder every one of those costs, we absolutely could do that. But, you know, the cost of that obviously would be cost prohibitive. Um, it, you can have people, there's this real fear that, that co-marketers can't pay for things for you like lunch or dinner or something like that. They absolutely can as long as what you're talking about is marketing. You're not supposed to be talking about, you know, how do... Um, how do I get the listing on 11734 Lakeshore that's so great? I want to take you to lunch and talk about it. But we can go to lunch and talk about our co-marketing efforts um, and how we want to market together as a team in general. Also, it's completely legal for people that you do business with to rent space. Um, um, if they, for example, they can rent closing room space. A lender can rent a desk in an office. Um, again, it has to be based on what the fair market value of that is, though. So I cannot pay Joe $3,000 a month to rent a closing room in the hope that Joe will send me closings um, because that is not what it would cost to rent a closing room um, to use for five transactions a month. That would be the hell of a closing room. So again, as long as what you're paying for is commensurate with what you're receiving, if the person you're doing business with is, is getting a benefit and that benefit is fair market value, then it's completely, completely legal. All right. Do we have any questions about any of that? Anybody have any question about something they're doing now and they want to know if it's allowed? All right. So let's talk about what is illegal. Some of you guys are going to be uncomfortable when you see that. Okay, number one, um, some time ago, a lot of, um, some, not a lot, some brokers decided, you know what, there's really a lot of money to be made in this title business or this loan business, and I'm leaving money on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my own lending company. I'm going to set up my own title company so that I can get a part of that business. Well, a lot of them found out that it's not as easy to do as they thought it was. And it's actually a lot of work. So instead of doing it legally, which we're going to talk about here at the bottom of the slide, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have an illegal arrangement with a title company, a lender, an attorney's office, whereby they, they the broker, get a service from that, from that provider, or sometimes they actually get money from that provider. And I'll give you an example of that. 
Um, and what they'll do to incentivize you as the agent to use that company is they will, some of them think they're cute and give you a gift card. Um, I don't know, presumably because it would be harder to check, to, to uh, find a check. I don't know why they want to do that, but there's several in the town that are doing this. Brokerages that are compensating their agents at, for using a title company of their choice, of the broker's choice. Um, it's illegal whether the, the broker that you're dealing with owns the company or not. Again, no matter who pays you for your referral of business, it is illegal. So your broker giving you a gift card or a check or something like that at closing because you've used a settlement provider or a lender of their choosing, you're both violating a law. Sometimes something we've seen happening um, is, for example, uh, Shana decides she wants to make a little money on the side, so she thinks it's a good idea to go get her title insurance at license. And then Shana goes to a title company and she says, you know what? Um, I'm going to put my license with you, title company, because I am a, a, a title insured license holder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to become a quote unquote employee of your business, Nagel. And uh, the way you're going to pay me is based on the, the files that you send me. This is happening rampantly, including in our community right now. This is completely and totally illegal from every in every respect. Certainly, any of you can work for a lender, a title company, any provider of settlement services that you want to. Um, and some do. Uh, and that's fine. You can totally work with them. But you have to be getting paid for the services you perform. So there's nothing that makes it illegal for Shana to come to have a real estate license and then put her title insurance license with me and then also, um, you know, work for me, but she has to actually work for me. I can't pay her by the number of referrals that she sends. You see this happening a lot in the lending industry. Uh, realtors will go and they'll get a mortgage license and they'll hang it with a lender of their preferred choice. And instead, again, instead of paying for the referral, instead what they'll do is get quote unquote paid as if they were performing services with their not. You also can't get discounts for referrals. So you can't say somebody, well, if you refer me, then I'll give you a discount on 20% on these services. That's against the law. Affiliated business arrangements are those um, arrangements where a title company, where you see it happen a lot, is a uh, real estate company will form a relationship with a, a title company, as an example, or a lender, and they will set up these ABAs. They're called affiliated business arrangements. And some of you have seen a lot of these because when you have this affiliated business relationship, it has to be disclosed, right? So it has to be um, in all the paperwork regarding your transaction. The reason you're not seeing as many of these is because if you do them correctly, they hardly ever work the way that the realtors hope that they work. So an affiliated business arrangement to be legal you have to be paid by company profits and your ownership in the company is what determines how much you get paid. So, you know, if you, I see Shana making a face. So Shana, if, if you wanted to form an affiliated business arrangement with a title company or a lender to do it legally, first of all, you'll have to set up a whole new company and you, that whole new company would have to have its own employees or lease employees. It would have to have its own equipment blah, 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 blah. It has to actually run as a going thing. Um, and then at the end of the day, it can't pay realtors based on the number of closings that they've sent, based on the total volume of their closings that they're sent. They can't pay the realtors on based on any of that. They can't pay the realtors except entirely on their ownership interest. There is a, 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 a firm that got involved with this when it was first happening back in the, uh, you saw it a lot in the late 90s and early 2000s, and he did it legally and has since told me it's the biggest mistake he's ever made because nobody's making any money. So that's that's the problem with a lot of this stuff. If you try to do it legally, um, it, it, it's hard to do, right? Because again, the whole idea is that whoever you're recommending is supposed to be whoever is providing you the best service, not who's going to put money in your pocket. Okay, so any questions? about things that might, any questions about something you're seeing that you think might be illegal, 
questions and ideas that you have that you want to know if they are legal? Who's got some ideas? All right, who is, who's who who has had um, lenders or others approach them and offer to to give them leads? Is anybody willing to raise their hand and say that that's happened? A lender or title company offering to give you leads in exchange for um, closing with them or using them as a lender. This is a really popular thing right now. So what's happening is some of the corporate agencies, especially ones, you know, the big, the big, big guys, again, that own some of the companies you think are privately owned around Lake and Sumter County, and they're not. But in any event, what they'll do is that they will pay. They would say, Joni, if you close with us, you can use our search engine and you can find all the buyers and the sellers, everything you want. Um, and what we'll do is we'll give you the login. And the way that we'll try to pass RESPA muster is say that we're sharing that work. But if you think about it, that makes no sense, right? You're not, they're, they're not interested in solicitation like you are. It's not a sharing of work. If you're ever offered something, I think the first and best thing for you to say to yourself is, am I being incentivized to do something that's good for me? Or am I being incentivized to do something that's good for my customer? And if you can answer the question of what's good for your customer, then you know that you're on the right track. If it's starting to look like, oh, I really like that extra $50 my broker gives me for every closing, then you know you're on the wrong track. Now, those are obvious examples, but these are things that people are really getting caught in because they think, oh, surely my broker wouldn't tell me to do something illegal. Well, many, many times the brokers don't know that what they're doing is illegal. So anytime that you're presented an opportunity, um, someone tells you they're going to do something for you or they want to do something with you, the question you should ask them is, how? tell me how this is legal under RESPA. And they should be able to answer you. And if they can't answer you to your satisfaction, then you should probably talk to somebody else. Because here again, title company gets fined, that's nothing. You guys lose your license, then you've lost your way of making a living or a, a way of making a good living. And you don't have to do this stuff. You can rely on the legal co-marketing. You can, this, and, and guys, this is, can go, the sky is the limit on your ideas and, and, and the things that you can get your lenders and your title companies to go in with you on. So long, at, and, and literally anything you can think of, my example of Joe and I going together and buying everybody a cruise, that's totally legal, right? So, but there's, there's folk, there are important things for you to focus on. Number one, are we sharing the expenses in a way that is sharing the marketing of our companies? So if Joe and I set up this cruise, and Joe and I went on the cruise and I had equal opportunity to share my services and meet my people and talk to folks, that would be totally legal as opposed to the other extreme for me to say, Joe, I will pay for your cruise or Joe, I'll pay for your cruise and I'll just put my name on your advertising materials. Again, you gotta remember what you're being asked, how you're being asked to share the cost, is that a fair, uh, is that fair based on the services that they are marked that the other partners in the transaction are marketing? Um, I get a lot of questions about things like this. Can I get people to pay for my listing packets? So many people want to have a really cool listing folder presentation um, to, or to kind of leave. Um, and they want to have other people pay for these items. So for sure, that is absolutely legal. You just have to make sure that the way it's paid for is fair to the way it's advertised. So if you want to have, you know, your home inspector, your title company, your uh, lender and your, I don't know, your organizing company each pay for a quarter of the cost of this little, well, a fifth, because you'd have to kick your part in, a fifth of the cost for this great little listing packet, completely legal. So important, important, important. Co- Marketing services are hugely important and you guys need to be thinking outside the box because I'm telling you lenders and title companies are as hungry for business as you are. So in this market, there's hardly any idea that you're going to have 
that's not going to be met with a yes, I would love to. Uh, Marisol, so example, broker says if the agent uses title company, they will give the agent the extra money. That is against the law, Marisol. It is against the law for the broker to offer and is against the law for you to accept. And those two, uh, you know, go, you're equally responsible, unfortunately. I got a question from Karen. So a lender can give you a lead if they have an approved buyer that needs an agent, correct? Okay, this is really important. Um, sometimes you are legitimately doing business and you come across people and they just refer to you. So Karen, if a lender just refers to you without expecting anything in return, that is not illegal. They can recommend you so long as they're recommending you because they think that you're the best agent for their customer. If they're recommending you because they expect for you to send them a loan back, that's illegal. And we see that a lot. I'll send you three people for every three lead, for every three buyer's leads you send me. We see a lot of that kind of horse trading happening. But again, let's focus on something that is legal. You can go to that lender and say, hey, let's do some co-marketing together. Let's have an event together. Um, let's do a presentation together. Um, you know, let's build a website together. Literally, literally, the sky is the limit on what you can do co-marketing. But if you know, again, Mirasol's example is huge. Yes, that is illegal. And that is people are should not be doing that. Okay. Any other questions? Any Anybody have any questions about things they see happening and they want to know if it's allowed? Remember also about what I said about is it's totally legal for people to share your space. So, you know, that's a great benefit to the lender and the title company too. If you want to offer them, for those of you who are a broker, if you want to offer them your space to close in, um, that's good for them. That's good for the title company, the lender, because it gets them in front of your whole office. That's good for you because it keeps the agent where you are. And that is something that can legally happen. So long as what the lender is paying for the space of the closing room and the use of the copy machine while they're there and the fact that you're going to give them coffee and all that, so long as what they, you are charging them is fair, then that's completely and totally legal. And something, again, think about it because that helps raise your esteem in the, in the eyes of your customers. It helps you grow your own business um, as well as grow theirs. So it's, again, totally legit. Any other okay, questions? I have a question. Yes, Karen. What about these builders that when you're bringing a buyer to show the builder home and they say, the buyer has to use our preferred lender. That's against the law and they're lying. Yeah, <laughs> I see it. You see it all the time. Another thing that you see that's against the law is you have to use our title company if you want to buy in this, in, this, uh, in this community. Again, illegal against the law. Now, if they're paying for it, whoever wants to pay for the services can say, if you want me to pay, you have to use this person. That's completely legal. But unfortunately, what we see builders doing instead is, uh, oh, by the way, you have to pay for it and you have to, um, you know, get my side of the deal, right? Like you have to pay for it and, and you can see how that's totally, that's totally illegal. So somebody just put, I've seen it where they'll say, we'll give you $10,000 in designer extras if you use our lender. For sure. We could sit here all day and talk about all the stuff that's illegal. Now, don't y'all realize why that's illegal? To say that if you, they cannot take their brokerage job and turn it into soliciting finances for their lender. Now, they can do things like waive certain closing fees. And maybe what they do in that situation is they waive fees and call it like upgrades because they get some money from the upgrades, obviously, right? Because they they say it's a four thousand dollar upgrade, but it costs them a thousand bucks. So 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 they can do some of that, but to go directly outright to the um, to to the realtor and say, you know, hey, oh by the way, this is what you're going to get if you use our lender is not is not allowed. Many, how to hire a virtual assistant. That is excellent. You can have virtual assistants. This is not the subject of this conversation, but I think it's important, Lisa, because this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing. Um, a virtual assistants are great and using them in country and out of country, the rules apply to a regular assistant. And you remember learning that in 
in school, right? In real estate school about what an assistant can do. They can go and unlock the door. They can hand out a MLS sheet, but they can't talk about the play. You know, you, you guys know all that. Well, those same rules apply to out-of-country assistance. The problem, though, is where you're not going to, where you are going to get in trouble, and even an unlicensed Lisa, even an unlicensed assistant can do things like that. They can give your MLS sheets out. They can unlock the door for the open house. They can fill out your forms on MLS. That's that's just being an administrative assistant. But where people are getting in trouble, and I, maybe I should have a whole thing on this, um, is we've seen these companies actually using it as a as a uh, a beard to steal information. So yeah, they're willing to work as your virtual assistant for $11 an hour because what they're actually doing is getting their paws on all of your information and then using it for their own. I mean, that's a great, if you think about it, if you could pay $12, you know, if I could pay $12 an hour to be getting leads all day long, that's a great deal. And so you have to be careful when you use these virtual assistants, you have to really do your due diligence. Um, to make sure that who you're using is a legit company, because as again, I said, some of them are just data mining operations posing as um, virtual assistants or closing assistants or, you know, let us do your paperwork for $10 an hour by some guy from um, India, who I'm sure is a delightful person, but does not speak English as his first language. And uh, what they're really doing is they've got a great data mining operation and they're working for hundreds of realtors and grabbing tons and tons of personal information that they're selling on the on the um, the black web. So that's really it's not there's no legal problem there, um, but it is something for you to be worried about kind of ethically. The saddest thing about being a lawyer is um, all the negativity that I see. Uh, I hate that. Right. I wish that I I wish the world was there were all these great people all over the place trying to work as virtual assistants and many of them are but unfortunately many of them have a different um a different agenda any other questions okay so whenever you're offered an opportunity the question to ask yourself is is this benefiting me or my customers and if things that are happening that are benefiting you, then you're probably violating RESPA. The other thing to think about is when you are doing your marketing, please get out there, take advantage of lenders and title companies and, and other people, you know, home inspectors, everybody related to the title industry needs as much business as they can. So whether it's a small expense, a large expense, get as many people involved to defray your expenses, um, host a great event and have six co-hosts so that you can you know, slow down the cost for yourself. Totally legal, as long as everybody there is also advertising their own services, are also inviting their own people and using it as their own legitimate co-marketing opportunity. Any questions? I hope I've explained like what I was trying to get into your brains is, is kind of the methodology, right? Co-marketing is legal as long as both people are marketing. It is illegal for somebody to pay your marketing expenses. That's it's that kind of that simple, right? So sharing thing, again, you can rent your space out. You can do lots of great things like that. And don't be afraid to offer that out. It's needed more than you know. Um, lots of times uh, folks need some closing space or they need desk space to process loan applications, um, that kind of thing. Um, there's an old uh, example in the RESPA regulations that I really thought was great. And it's kind of a way to help you understand this. This actually was a case. A lender purchased a fax machine to put in the office of a real estate company. And the purpose of the fax machine was just to fax him loan applications. That was completely legal. They, they contrasted that with another situation where the, the lender bought a fax machine for the brokerage for them to use to send applications, but the brokerage actually used it for other things too, right? And that would be illegal. It's, it's, it's strange, some of these examples. And the reason that's illegal, Leslie, is because you bought a somebody a, a fax machine with the hope that they're going to send you business. And since they can use it for other things, this is now their fax machine as opposed to you having your own dedicated fax machine, completely legal. So that's why it's completely legal to rent space for a closing, for example, 
but completely illegal to just send the, the brokerage money. Does that make sense? Okay, any more questions before I let you guys go? I do yep. have a question that is not really kind of related in a way. Okay, um, I got, well, realtor, all, I'm licensed realtor and unlicensed mortgage. Excellent. But because of the way things are right now, I'm actually, and you know, 80% of the, the applications and stuff that come through on either side don't have good credit. So right now I'm learning credit repair. I'm going to go into doing credit repair. Mm -hmm. But some of the videos I've been watching and some of the training videos, they're saying like, I, I think it's a respite violation, but you can answer this. Because what they're saying, for credit repair, you don't need to be licensed. Mm -hmm. And I'm just taking a certificate, certificate program to so I know what I'm doing, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what they're saying, it what a few people are saying is, yeah, we talk to realtors and what we do when they send us their um, uh, people that, you know, their credits under the 680, then we, um, when they send us those, if we can work with them to get their credit repair, we send them $25, you know, for each one. <clears throat> and, and I'm thinking that, that sounds, I'm not quite sure because it's now, for me, I'm not like, I won't be licensed as credit repair but i'll be certified does that still well, that's a situation but leslie that's a situation where the sending of the money the um credit repair company is not governed by respa because credit repair however the person receiving the money the mortgage lender or the realtor is so that's a perfect example where the credit the credit repair company is not violating the law by offering that the realtor is is violating the law by accepting it. And this is where realtors can get in trouble because they think surely somebody wouldn't be offering it if it was illegal. Well, it might not be illegal for the people that are offering it, like home inspectors, for example, are not governed by RESPA, right? So it might not be illegal for the person offering it, or maybe the broker doesn't know the law, right? You can't assume because ignorance of the law or the fact that the other person is not governed by RESPA is not, unfortunately, is not an, a, a way to get out. You violated the law by accepting a, 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 a money for the referral of services. Okay, so what if, so for me, if I, you know, if I'm continuing- I wouldn't do it for $25. If it was $25 million, Leslie, if it was 25 million, maybe we'd talk and we'd set you up an offshore account in the Bahamas. But I surely would not be putting up my, uh, I would not be putting my, my license on the line for $50 for a closing or, you know, $25 for a referral or something like that. So on the on the side then of being um, a, 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 a credit repair person mm -hmm. so would it be okay to say okay for every it, every person that you send me your name goes in the drawing and in 12 months we draw out no not even so right so under the law you're not even allowed to have drawings in a limited category unless unless um it was open to everyone so for example, Leslie, I can host a, uh, you could host a credit repair seminar, right? Open to everyone. And then everyone who came and put their thingy in a jar, they could win something as long as it wasn't too highly valuable, but that was for coming to the event. What you can't do is say, okay, for every realtor that sends me a deal, you're gonna go in a drawing at the end of the year, you'll get a TV which I know of a title company who does that. That would be an example of, of how you can't do it, but you can still have, do you see how Leslie, you can still do solicitations and you can still try to gain interest, but in your situation, you can't limit it to people who have sent you business. Okay, but you could open it up though, as long as it's not anybody that sends you business, you could put their name in, even if they're Joe well, but then, but then again, you have to be the, careful of the other rule, which we have not talked about today, which is offering something, quote unquote, of value. So they used to say five dollars or less was not of value. That number has gone up a little bit. And you hear people saying twenty five dollars or less is just kind of, you know, de minimis. Um, and we try to keep all of our things that we do to that at that number, Leslie. RESPA mm -hmm. doesn't actually have a number. RESPA says nothing of value. 
So when we get these numbers about, you know, maybe $5 is okay, maybe $25 is okay, that's just based on experience of what, you know, what the feds will actually go after people for. But the baseline rule is you can't offer anything of value. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Shana, ADT calls every time we have an offer, their agent 250 if their client sets up an alarm with them. Is that kind of the same thing? Yes, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Again, guys, ADT is not governed. You guys are. Again, what is the benefit of the arrangement you have with the partner? Is it a benefit to you? Is it a benefit to everyone who's paying for the benefit? So if we filter this ADT offer through that lens, we can see very, very quickly that, um, no, that I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. I would never sell my ethics or my license for 250 bucks. And I, listen, I am in no way, I wish all of the realtors had, had uh, mortgage licenses and all the licenses because it only makes you better. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. I'm just saying you have to be extra careful. Eileen, I can't see her face today, but I'm sure she has to walk the line between property management and actually selling um, and helping people buy and sell actual real property. Uh, can you give a coffee gift card to a lender title for helping with a broker's open? So Lisa, again, this goes back to pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. It depends on what you mean by helping. So if a title company is involved in, or a lender or title company is helping you with a broker's open, what you really should do is get them to pay half the cost instead of just giving them a coffee gift card, because that way you've reduced your cost by half, right? It's a lot more valuable than a gift card and you've done it legally. Remember the RESPA rule is, the RESPA fallback is nothing of value for the referral of business. But again, we go back between this $5, $25. That's why I'm trying to get you guys to think outside of the gray area and go straight over to the white where we know we're not in trouble. So instead of asking the lender or title to help and give them some money, ask them, hey, I need your people there and will you pay half? And they will say, absolutely. Or say, yeah, I, I want the lender there and they'll pay a third, I'll pay a third and the title company will be a, pay a third completely legal. So again, I want y'all to stay away from the illegal stuff and open your mind to the legal co-marketing things that you can be doing, which are better because you're going to meet more people. You're going to, you know, when you invite your lender and when you invite your title company to participate, they're going to be advertising on their spots. You're going to get more people to come. You're going to meet more people. So these co-marketing that I want you guys to really be thinking about is not just for the money. It's obviously for access to other people's clients and data. Right. So, so it's not just to help offset the cost of the event, but actually make the event more valuable to you. Yes, Eileen says it's exhausting. Yes, yes, yes. Is it still illegal to accept a referral for referring a personal friend on a non real estate referral? Totally personal, just because I'm a. I don't understand your question, Bonnie. Do you want to unmute and actually um, give it? Hi, I'm sorry. I actually typed that wrong. So, is it illegal to accept a referral? fee from a company for referring a personal friend, not even real estate related, just because I am a licensed agent? No. So RESPA doesn't govern everything you do. RESPA mm -hmm. governs what you do regarding real estate related transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, if your hairdresser gives you $10 for every person that you refer them to, you haven't violated RESPA. But when it starts looking and smelling like it has to do with a title transaction, um, then you're going to have a problem. Marisol, I have a golf tournament coming up and my lender is going to co-market with me. Having them cover half of the cost is okay. Yes. So so be it's not just the marketing material that needs to be 50-50 to keep you out of trouble, Marisol. Make sure they have a presence at the event, that they're actively working the event. Um, but they're going to want to do that anyway right? Um, because that's the biggest bang for their buck is to actually be out there in front of your people. So I, I you know, if, if the only marketing piece is a flyer, then just splitting the cost of the flyer with the lender is fine because that's the only thing you're doing. If go to the broker's open, splitting the cost of the broker's open is fine so long as there's representatives from the company at the broker's open and they're also marketing their own services. 
um, they won't be able to make it, but wants to market with me, then Marisol asks them if they can send in a representative from their own company. Um, if they only want to, if they can't come at all, one thing they could sure, for sure go on 50-50 with you or is the production of like the paper materials, signage, things like that. But when it starts getting outside of just that small amount of solicitation, you should be careful um, because again, if you're splitting the cost 50-50, the idea is you're just bidding under RESPA, you're supposed to be splitting the marketing 50-50, the actual marketing work 50-50. What about when people have a raffle at open house? Is that legal? Yes, it is. And you say, now, why is that? Well, first of all, everyone's invited to the um, raffle. It's not legal if you say, I've, I've got these 10 high producing realtors and I'm going to offer them a steak dinner or a chef made thing and, you know, that kind of stuff, then obviously that would not be legal because it would be limited to just a certain people that you're trying to market to. The other problem with a raffle um, is if it's of the, like, like you'll always notice that our raffle baskets are us because that's a marketing basket. If I were to come to your event and have a, a basket that has a $100 bottle of Dom Perignon champagne and a $200 Amazon gift card and all this other kind of stuff, I'm not marketing my services at your event. What I'm trying to do is get you to invite me and refer me business by preparing for you a really beautiful basket. So we're not co-marketing, we're illegally trying, I'm illegally trying to get a benefit from you for referring services. Again, the, the emphasis on legal co-marketing needs to be co-marketing. Rebecca's like, what is going on? Make sure that what's happening is co-marketing. So if Leslie and I wanted to do a thing, she wanted to do a thing as a lender and I wanted to do a thing as a, as a title company and we wanted to have an event and I was going to have a raffle basket and it was just going to be my stuff and everybody was going to be invited and we split the cost of the event completely legal. This is what I'm saying. I want you guys to be mining these legal opportunities because Leslie can tell you, anybody on here that's, um, I know Dawn's a lender, everybody needs business. So people are very excited and want to help you get business. So reach out to those to do stuff legally rather than um, some gray stuff that you're in trouble, could get in trouble for. Now, a question has arisen um, what happens if your broker offers, what happens if you're at an agency where your broker offers you money to close with their folks or use their home inspector or use their lender? You can't take it, right? And, and how, you, how you message that with your broker is between you and you. I just don't want you guys to accidentally feel like, well, I mean, they offered, what was I supposed to do? Turn it down? Yes, you were supposed to turn it down. Okay, Eileen, you have a question. Unmute yourself. Oh, I like you did something different with your hair, Eileen. I'm such a girl. You straightened it. I love it. Yeah. And and I got rid of the grays because property management grays me up a lot. Yeah, no uh, shit. So every once in a while, I, I love listening to your classes, but every once in a while I gotta throw in some property management in there. And my thing is I, I pay referrals to realtors that send me some money, a lease, and I try and yeah, but that's management. legal. That's a legal, legal. business referral. Yeah. But what they tend to forget and they've been mad at me for is I can't pay them. I can only pay their broker. Right. And their broker pays them the referral fee, whatever it is. And I had somebody that was telling people that I don't pay referrals. And luckily that one person that they heard came and told me because they knew that's one thing I built in this, this, this area is I pay referrals. And the broker had it. The broker didn't know what it was for. So they didn't do anything. It was just sitting there. And not the broker, yeah. but the accounting department. It was, it was a larger, a larger um, thing. And so it's just you got to remember who's going to pay you from that referral because brokers aren't allowed to pay realtors unless they work with under their license. Yeah, that is excellent, Eileen. So what you're doing is completely legal because you're a real estate licensed professional performing legal services, referring to another legal licensed professional performing legal services, just like any referral fee. But you're right, just like commission, it has to go through the broker and then to the agent. Anybody else have any questions? Are, are you going to be at the PPIR tomorrow? I don't know what that is. So the, no. the professional people in real estate is where I'm at. Not you. tomorrow, I will. I'm at your house. 
when you see this, oh, you, can you guys see this? You can't really see my background. I am in, I am in Texas today, but I will not, I will be at the PPIR sometime later. And that's a perfect example of how PPIR is legal, right? So um, various PPIR is, a, is a, a legal network. You guys, I mean, a marketing network. You guys can get involved in these all day and twice on Sunday and you should. PPIR is professional people in real estate up in the villages. So home inspectors, title companies, lenders, realtors, everybody that wants anything to do with a transaction gets together and they sponsor these meetings. But the reason it's completely legit is because everybody is co-marketing and anyone is invited to come. So if we set up a PPIR and we chose 10 of you and we gave you all these beautiful perks, now we could still just host meetings for just 10 of us, but when we start giving you perks for things, that's when you're crossing the line and violating the law. But again, legally co-marketing, setting up your own referral, kind of not a referral group in terms of, um, you know, you're getting paid, but there's nothing wrong with you getting with Vic DeVore or any, any of these people. Just start thinking outside the box and, and getting some, some Zoom presentations. You'd be shocked how much people love Zoom presentations because nobody's got time to go to stuff anymore. Start thinking outside the box on how to legally co-market and start approaching your, your fellow professionals in the industry because they will say yes, they will, and you will stay out of trouble. And it's a lot bigger benefit than illegally accepting $50 per closing because you sent it to the, your broker's title, preferred title provider, whether it's attorney or whatever, right? It's a lot bigger benefit to grow your business for yourself rather than put money in your broker's pocket, more money in your broker's pocket. Any more questions of me? All right, you guys have been awesome. As usual, call me if you need anything. One of the ways that I can legally offer legal advice to realtors is that I offer it to everyone. You don't have to close with me if you want to call me and ask me any question, even if you have a closing that is in process, you guys, somewhere else. And you're like, what the actual heck is happening? I need somebody who's got a brain to explain this to me. Please call me. Um, I want to help you. I genuinely, genuinely want to help you. Um, and I want to help the whole industry. And that's what I do when I help people that are not in business with me, right? I help everybody because that's making the whole world better. So thank you guys. As usual, um, I will be seeing you next time. Oh, by the way, I'm letting everybody know that if you missed the LLC um, PA kind of thing that we did, or you came and you were just like, oh my gosh, I just drank, uh, just was drinking water out of a fire hose. We're having another one of those um, because that was so popular. So be watching for that. It's how to legally set up your LLC or your PA or however you want to do your real estate business and the tax benefits, pros and cons of doing it both either way. So I really would like to see more of you undertaking these um, business entities because it will absolutely save you money and keep you out of, a little bit out of trouble. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful week. Kill it. Bye.